Free China, Professor Zheng Yongnian. Uh, Professor Zheng, please come and share with us your views, not necessarily that of official China, but your personal view. Thank you, uh, Tommy, for, for this very nice uh, invitation. I'm working in another campus, so it's my first time I've been here. It's so wonderful. So I saw that in the public, after I retired, I should go to college again. Very, very nice. Well, today, uh, well, it's a very important subject. I would say, of course, I will not represent uh, China, but for for my life, I have been focused on China study. So I understand China and the Chinese people more. So I will uh, approach the topic from a more uh, China perspective. So my topic is uh, today is why China and the United States will not go to war. A, a subtitle, a Chinese culture perspective. So the external environment uh, for China foreign policy is changing and challenging in, in recent years. Uh, China has been under great pressure in its relations with the outside world. The United States has declared to return to Asia a few years ago. Some of American actions have actually made China worry very much through my interaction with, with for right organizations or government officials in China. The U.S. has focused on the TPP in the economic sphere and the issue of the South China Sea in the military sphere. Both schemes have profound strategic implications for China. Along the changes in its policy, as uh, Ambassador Tommy mentioned, I think it's equally important that as the American discourse on its foreign policy to China has also undergone tremendous changes, shifting from uh, positive uh, to negative. While changes in the discourse might be resulted from the American election politics this year, and these changes do not necessarily lead to actual policy changes. The many, many Chinese do not believe so. Indeed, as I understand, many people inside or outside China began to believe that the two big powers, China and the United States, will go to conflict and even a war. So personally, I don't believe so. My argument is cultural. Here, I will not go to uh, like economic factors or interdependency or other factors, you know, because I, I like, I admire my my, my former boss, Professor Wang Gongwu, yeah, go to something cultural. Culture will tell you very many things. So I would like to answer the question, why will China and the United States not go to war from a culture, Chinese culture perspective? First of all, I have to say that culture matters in international relations. Many conflicts between states are manifested as cultural conflicts. The, Existence of cultural factors in international relations cannot be denied, even though we don't have a very substantive, uh, good literature on the impact of cultures on international relations. I'm not sure. You know, I graduated many years ago. I, was, I wonder whether there is a new development of culture and international relations. But in the early 1990s, uh, Samuel Huntington at Harvard University proposed a theory of the crash of civilizations. Despite the theory is not well received in academia, it has aroused much attention and debate in the policy making process, particularly in Asia. As a matter of fact, the September 11 terrorist attack is often regarded as, as a, a sign of the uh, example of the culture of civilization clash of civilizations. Civilizations and the cultures do not inherently bring wars or conflict. But when sovereign states from different civilizations interact with each other very frequently, huge power will be released, which can lead to either cooperation or conflict. 
it's not difficult to find out how culture plays its role in international relations. There are two aspects, I, I believe. First, culture influences international relations as a way of thinking, uh, as a way of thinking. Culture is a term that have many different interrelated means. However, the manifestation of the core of inner culture is a unique way of thinking. The mode of thinking is not a cause of conflict, but the inter interaction of two different ways of thinking will probably lead to conflict. In international politics, the theme of the thinking is the self and the other and the interaction uh, between the two. Different cultures have different understanding of this matter. Uh, for example, a defensive strategy in one culture may be perceived as an offensive one in another culture. Second, culture can be mobilized and utilized as a resource or tool for, to influence international relations by sovereign states or other actors. Culture will have infinite impacts once it is utilized as a, as a resource. There are many examples in this regard. For, for example, while Muslim, uh, I think, is a very peaceful culture, its teachings can be distorted and misused to form a spiritual foundation of terrorism for extreme fa fundamentalists. T to take another example, uh, some Western countries, or uh, like the United States, are often able to mobilize the culture of freedom or democracy to the greatest extent to serve their goals in international relations. Okay, another example is nationalism. Nationalism is more often utilized by states and that becomes the cultural root of many international and domestic conflicts. Now, you might ask me, why the interaction between the Chinese culture and the American culture will not lead to a war between the two? given the fact that the cultural interaction has caused so many interstate war. We should, be able, we should be able to tell differences between small scale conflicts and a major war. I'm not going to detail. All kinds of conflicts, such as trade conflicts and ideological oriented debates on the issues such as human rights between China and the United States, I think are inevitable and also absolutely normal. But a major war between the two is unlikely. Here are my cultural uh, argument. There is a difference between the Chinese culture and the, the American culture. The differences of the two cultures are manifested in two different ways of thinking. A long history of several, hundred, several thousand years has bestowed China a rare sense of a big history. China is able to perceive long-term issues from a long-term vision. The Chinese sense of rationality is very different from the American sense of rationality. Chinese rationality is linked to a sense of a big history, while the American rationality focuses more on how to maximize the immediate interests. The Chinese rationality has been demonstrated in many aspects. When China deals with international issues, such as the North Korea nuclear issue, it's very slow. The Americans sometimes become very impatient, but China actually tends to find the more proper solutions to its problems by thinking at the time of doing. China sees many problems as inherent in the process of development, and it believes solutions will surely come up if the development continues. Chinese people often leave the difficult questions to the future and let time be a natural solution as long as the issues are adequately managed and not uh, exhib exhibited into practical problems. We can make, uh, I think, a knowledge of this difference. The Chinese way of doing, uh, I mean, dealing with international relations is very similar to the Chinese medicine which takes a long time to cure uh, illness, while the American way is similar to the Western medicine, very effective, you know, it's a surgery, uh, very quick, effective. 